Hello again, year eight. And today in our sixth probability lesson, we are gonna be looking at frequency trees. It's very likely you met frequency trees in year seven. We are gonna be seeing why we use frequency trees and how we can calculate some probabilities from a frequency tree. However, before we get started, it might be that today we are going to be doing a few questions that involve some percentages. We haven't done any percentage work since year seven. In fact, percentages are, is our next topic after probability. So what I'd like you to just quickly think about for a couple of minutes is if we had this percentage spider where 60 pounds represents everything, what would these other percentages be? What would the values of these monies around the edge, what percentage would they represent? So pause the video here because I'm about to go through the answers. So I would hope you would recall to find 10% of a number, you divide by 10. So that would be six pounds. And whilst I'm here looking at six pounds, if 10% is six pounds, then three pounds, half of six pounds, must be 5%. To find 25%, you halve the number and you halve the number again. So half would be 30, half would be 15. And since I've just spotted 30 pounds over here, this must be 50%. Could use 25% to work out 75% by timesing that number by three. So that is 45 pounds. To find 40% of 60, well, I know that 10% is six. So I would need four 10%. So that must be 24. 12 pounds. Well, 12 pounds is six pounds doubled. So it must be 10% doubled. 20%. And then finally, I've got this 21 pounds. I'm going to link this into the three pounds, I think, because it is seven times three pounds. So it is seven times 5%, which is 35%. So I hope you've been able to print out one of my note sheets for today, but if that's not been possible, you will need to write a title, you will need to write a date, you will need to write an objective. You'll probably also want a pencil and a ruler when you are actually trying to draw the frequency tree. So what is a frequency tree? Well, a frequency tree is just a way of exploring the proportions for some sort of data that you've either been given or collected and as I have said it can sometimes be linked into percentages it can also be linked into ratio although I'm not going to do any ratio style questions today so we're going to see how this works with our first example there's quite a little bit of reading to do today so always read these questions really carefully it says example one 40 students were asked if they liked Harry Potter. 30% of the students were girls. 10 boys liked Harry Potter. 25% of the girls did not like Harry Potter. Use this information to complete a frequency tree. So a frequency tree shows you the grand total, which is 40. And then it splits it into categories. Now, reading through the question, I can see the categories that I've got are girls and boys. And then they're talking about whether they liked Harry Potter. I'm assuming they're talking about the film and not the person. So I'm going to put like and dislike and like and dislike. So always make sure you are labeling a frequency tree so you know what each circle represents. So let's read through it again and see if we can populate some of these circles as we go along. 40 students were asked if they liked Harry Potter. So that's my starting value. 30% of the students were girls. Well, how can I work out 30%? Well, I can do 10% 
by dividing by 10. So 10% 10 is 4. I need three lots of that. No harm showing a bit of working out. 30% is 12. Now, although we've not been told this number, we now know this number or can calculate it or work it out. Because if we have 12 girls and there was 40 people all together, there must be 28 boys. So these things add to make this number. So although I wasn't told there was 28 boys, we were able to work that out. And you'll be able to do a lot of that with frequency trees. So if you get one value and you calculate one value, look for other values you can work out along the way. I've now been told 10 boys like Harry Potter. And since there are 28 boys in total, this number must be 18. These branches must add to make this total. 25% of the girls did not like Harry Potter. So 25% of the girls halve it, halve it again, did not like. Three goes there. Which means the final number there must be nine as these branches must add to make the 12 girls. What is the probability that if I pick a student at random, they like Harry Potter? So how many people out of the 40 liked Harry Potter? We have the nine girls, we have the 10 boys, it's this one and this one combined. It is 1940s. Let's look at a second example. Slightly different looking frequency tree, as you might have already seen. I've got a couple of branches and then some branches split into three. That will make more sense when we read the question. So example two, David's football team has played 60 games this season. They have played 40% of these games at home. Of their home fixtures, they are unbeaten and have won 75%. In the away fixtures, they have won 25% and lost six games. Use this information to complete a frequency tree. So why are the two branches going up? Well, this is the number of games and we know that that is 60. Okay, the reason why there's two branches is because we have some home fixtures and we have some away fixtures. Now, normally you'd play an equal number of games home and away. We're not going to worry about that. Maybe they haven't finished the whole season yet. It says they have played 40% of their games at home. So we can work out 40% of 60. So I, again, would work out 10% first. 10% of 60 is 6. Times it by 4 is 24 home games. These branches must add to make the 60, so this number here must be 36 away games. So why are there now three branches? Well, if you play a football match, you can do one of three things. You can win, you can lose, or you could draw. I think I'm going to do it in the order win, draw, lose. And I'll do the exact same order for the away fixtures. Win, draw, lose. Okay, the next sentence that I'm gonna read is, of their home fixtures, they are unbeaten and have won 75%. Now, some of you might think that doesn't make sense. If you are unbeaten, you've won everything. No, that's not true because you can draw games. But the fact that they are unbeaten in their home fixtures means they haven't lost a single game. So I can put a zero there. They have won 75%. Well, let's find 75%. Let's do 25% by halving and halving again. So 25% is also 6. So 75% is 18. So that means they've won 18. And they have drawn six. They 
add up to the 24 home games. It says in the away fixtures, they have won 25% and lost six. So let's put the lost six in. 25% of 36. Half it, 18. Half it again, nine. So they have won nine. How many have they drawn? Well, collectively, now we know these combine to make 15 away games. So I think we need a further 21. All of these three branches now add up to 36. We're now in a position to answer our probability question. What is the probability that if I picked a match at random, it would have been an away game they drew? So that is 21 out of 60. But of course, if a fraction cancels, I will be looking for you to do that, please. Both of these numbers are in the three times table, so that one cancels to 7 twentieths. So there are some questions for you to try today. There are some level one, some level two, some level three questions. So see how you get on. As always, use the last five minutes to check your answers. If it is a level three question where you have drawn out the frequency tree yourself, just pay a little bit of attention that you might not have done your branches in the exact same order as mine. As always, if there's been any problems with today's lessons and you have any questions, you can ask in the Ask the Teacher channel.